Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of K Fade with Will Farrow and Cleo Thomas. Of course, I am the anomaly Will Farrow. Cleo Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. And of course, we are coming off the backlash. It was a whole lot of lashings of the back. That sounds horrible in today's time right now. <laughs> it does, but we're going to just glance right over that one. Sometimes Yoda's like wordplay doesn't work on certain things. Actually, nope. that kid was good. Like, no, sir. Yeah, Yoda, it was never okay, no, actually. No, but nope. I don't think that's right. Nope. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, we just are coming off of the pay per view backlash with WWE. Um, of course, the greatest wrestling match was the headliner of tonight's pay-per-view. We're going to get into that shortly and stuff like yep. that. Uh, I want to kind of start up at the top of the hour. Uh, we've got the kickoff show, the United States Championship. Andrade Cianamas versus Apollo Crews in the pre-show. Apollo okay. Crews uh, retains the title from Andrade Cianamas. With, uh, seems like a, bit, a little bit of help uh, with the confusion from Kevin Owens and Angel Garza. So uh, hmm. apparently... There might be a whole thing going on with that now. Pretty decent okay. match. Uh, definitely building Apollo up to be a great runner for the United States title. Uh, for sure. So, um, definitely loving what Apollo is doing. Um, I'm loving the, the the edge that he has now because he's always mm-hmm. been a phenomenal athlete. Um, great prowess, but the personality was always just kind of off. It was always just that. I'm like, eh. He was a black Lex Luthor, Luger. Yeah, and it was just like, and I didn't like Lex Luger then, and it was just like, this doesn't work now. But nope. I'm glad that he switched it up, got a little change on him. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's good to see, man. First pay-per-view defense for his uh, United States t- title. Uh, going up against an incredible um, opponent. Like, uh, was it Cien Almas? Yes, Andrade. Ooh, Andrade. It was an incredible wrestler. Let's not forget, though, his first debut wasn't all that either. No, I would have no, never man. thought the guy in the top hat and latex suspenders would go on to be this incredible athlete in that ring. I wasn't familiar with him, but he comes from a lineage of Mexican mm-hmm. wrestlers who are incredible. Yeah. Uh, to go on to not only be incredible in the ring, to go ahead and cuff up Charlotte Flair. Yep. Smart investment on that, man. It's a great investment, oh, sir. Put your, put your time in the right place. I see you. Oh, yeah. You ain't slick, but I see you, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. He, uh, I remember him from his mask days before he even uh, decided to take the mask off and stuff. And again, like you said, character switch kind of threw it off. But then, you know, back to what I said uh, in our previous episodes about Zelina Vega being one of the greatest managers of all time. I've said it. Still still ready to debate it. Switched, Stand by. Whole, we switched his whole character up. Got him an NXT championship. Got him a main roster boost. United States title. And, and, and the United States title was won in Madison Square Garden against Rey Mysterio. So let's not forget yeah. that. First, first title yeah. win against uh, basically the person that shaped you and paved the way for you to be able to be here. So but a uh, great match between the two. Much respect to both of them. And so that was the pre-show. Then we moved on to the real show. Triple threat women's tag team match. Iconics. Um, Alexis Bliss and Nikki Cross. And then, of course, Bailey, Sasha. Ah, you know what it is. You know what it is. We're going to get into that a little bit. I don't want to say too much about it. Um, of course, Bailey and Sasha remain the raw, I mean, excuse me, the women's tag team champions. Uh, Sasha Banks pinning Alexa Bliss. Nice. Victory and stuff, kind of saving the Iconics is, you know, still kind of being that power play. i um, not sure what's going to be happening with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. But, um, you know, again, I don't want to say too much because we do have something a little bit later on in the show that we do want to talk about involving the women's division. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of black worn in this in this uh, match. Everybody was uh, decked out in black in this one. I was like, it's a lot of less colors in this one. Hmm. Hmm. Iconics were in black and silver. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey were in black and silver. You know, and uh, Nikki's majority is you know like the black leather spandex with a hint of the pink. Uh, so yeah. Alexa Bliss, but I was just like, I don't know. I just kind of stood out but uh you know overall overall decent match um uh-huh. nothing to really brag about but nothing also to bring down any of their um you know career statuses right now but like i said we'll 
get into that in a little bit. We'll get yeah. into that a little bit later. But I do want to mention the fact that Bailey and Sasha being uh, the women's tag team champions feels like something that should have happened because this was their second now title run. Yes. I felt like they lost it a little too early on the first one anyway. I personally feel that way. Um, and then also with the Iconics, man. I like the Iconics. Oh, yeah. I think they're great, great characters, bro. They feed off each other so well. Uh, they've had such an incredible <laughs> the, the catchphrase in the stand. The, I, I love it. I don't know why, but I freaking love it. And that is why I love the WWE. I could have something as serious as a Randy Gordon versus Edge match. Yes. Something as goofy as these two girls being the villains, being the mean girls, and hitting that. I got it. Amazing, amazing. It, it's dope. I, I I feel like, and again, we'll we'll, we'll I, I'll, I'll say I'll save that for them. But uh, but yes, I will agree with you. So uh, yeah. moving moving forward into the pay per view, we had uh, Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. A yeah. very very good match. Uh, Sheamus picking up the victory against Jeff Hardy. Uh, storyline a little bit. Um, storyline I, I felt a little rushed. Okay. Okay. Agreed. The the okay. premise of the story, uh, for those that don't know, um, Jeff has been dealing, of course, with fighting battles with addiction and trying to uh, currently remain with his sobriety. Um, he's had some uh, brushes with the law, mug shots have been brought up, but he's been very transparent about it and transparent about his road to recovery. And so, even such, putting it amongst the storylines within the WWE. And Done it several that, times. Yeah, and this next person that's pulling on to that addiction tether is no other than Seamus. There was a um, setup about a, a car accident in where Elias was injured, and he, uh, Jeff Hardy was to be the person that caused the injury due to him inebriated. But it turned out to be Seamus behind it, and then Seamus is using those tactics to be able to face Jeff Hardy, and then there's a contract signing, and Seamus is wanting a drug test from Jeff Hardy, and then Jeff Hardy throws the piss in his face. You know, classic, uh, same thing that Shawn Michaels did when Vince McMahon asked him to. And in Beaumont, Texas, I was there the night that happened. Oh, I was in the arena okay. the night that happened on that Monday Night Raw. I nice. was there. Nice. And so uh, just to see that um, the two of them going head to head, it was a, it was a very good, great match, very good match. Um, just I feel like it's two people right now that still kind of just not really, not really sure where to put them right now. And so it's just kind of like, OK, after this, what's happening? Because, you know, like, of course, Seamus defeats Jeff Hardy. So Jeff Hardy doesn't overcome. So, you know, like what happens is like Seamus continue to bother him as he move on to the next victim. Who knows? Jeff becomes the character from TNA, the Willow or a Willow character. I mean, he maybe. I, listen, the Jeff Hardy WWE run was amazing in his time. Hardy Boys Jeff, great. WWE Champion Jeff, great. CM Punk beef. That's what things still are going left mm -hmm. outside the ring. Jeff will be respected and loved for who he is naturally. He is Jeff Hardy. Oh, yeah. He is too extreme. Do we need that in this era? Not really. Do we need Jeff Hardy against Sheamus? In my opinion, not really. Not really. Nah. I don't, I don't, I need the, I don't mind Jeff when, if he took an Undertaker out, you know, and I don't even mean like a WrestleMania run, like extreme rules, like, SummerSlam or something like that. Heck, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing Jeff at NXT. Whoa. Shaping Whoa. some of these boys up. Because you remember, you do got the high flyers there. Yes, this is true. Not so, bad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't mind seeing him teaming up with somebody that may not have that gripping star power yet. But for him to go in there and start like helping shape some of these high flyers that love doing these jumps and stuff. Like imagine him being behind like Io Shirai and stuff, her character. And like now you say with the Willow character busting out there and stuff like that. Like it's just, it's so many, it's so many options and opportunities or even like him versus Finn Balor. Like that would be like that would be an insane match. So it's just like you know, if it if it were an option to be something, and that's if Jeff wants to continue to do like this consistent run. But like how you said, uh, uh, and, and going back to the whole run of the Undertaker, I don't mind seeing him in some spots, mm. and I'd be okay with that. 
I'd be okay yeah. with seeing him coming back every now and again. And then going home and being able to enjoy his kids, enjoying his family, enjoying like, you know, that 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 hearty lot that they have, man. Like you said, he's done so much already and we and we love him for that. We love the things that he's done and the career that he's had. Out there in Cameron, North Carolina. From Cameron, North Carolina. No, Cameron. Yeah, man. So listen. For Jeff to return and Matt to return at WrestleMania, Jeff has been here ever since. And for him to catch like a case in this time, it kind of blew my mind. I was like, "Damn, still with the still with the antics, huh? Still with the yeah. shit." But hey, man, everyone got to battle their demons in their own way. But uh, nonetheless, they put on a great match, which I'm sure most people appreciated. But that's just where I stand with seeing Hardy uh, back underneath the WWE brand, bro. Yeah, no, I I, I completely agree. So. Uh, we'll see what will happen coming up Friday on SmackDown. If this will continue, if they'll move into another chapter, or will this be the end between that few? So, but moving back on to the Raw side, we had the yeah. Raw Women's Champion, Asuka, defending her title against Nia Jax. And it ended up in a double count out, which um, allowed Asuka to remain with the title. Um, uh-huh. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I feel like now, um, I feel like now this kind of goes with what we're going to talk about later. Okay. Uh, And that is the women, current women's division right now. So I am going to reserve what I need to say again, too, from this match about what we have to talk about later. Okay. No problem. But yeah, uh, Asuka still remains the Raw Women's Champion. Um, Nia Jax, of course, um, double count out. So as we know, both people kind of don't lose their steam. Yeah. Uh, most likely, we'll probably have to do something like Extreme Rules and uh, together, which is the next pay per view that's coming up. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. So, but I have a lot to say. About uh, but the next one was the handicap match: Braun Strowman versus The Miz and John Morrison for the Universal Title. Braun Strowman, of course, uses all of his might. He was a true monster among men, as his moniker states, and he walked yep. out as the Universal t- uh, Champion. And still, yes. Um, Cool match, another one of those that's just kind of like, okay, I, I, you know, um, I'm sure there's someone that wanted a real title shot. Um, Between those two, that you could, yeah, that you could yeah. have found. I wouldn't have mind seeing Braun Strowman versus The Miz. I wouldn't have seen mind seeing Braun Strowman versus John Morrison. So, um, I think this is a very blatant call as to not really sure what to do with him okay as champion okay i think due to the fact of roman not being able to compete and him being able to step up and a title being brought to him a lot of things changed uh um, okay. luckily with the bray wyatt thing there was history there so it made sense i don't know why it didn't continue to keep going on stop um, that tracks i would have loved to continue t- to see like those chapters unfold and see what could have really happened and everything. So, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to do uh, exactly with Braun Strowman, but again, um, fun for the crowd to watch. Great to see. Like, you, 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 like, you never really disappointed with Braun's performance, but in some cases you are disappointed in the way that they are utilizing this talent. Gotcha. So. I get that. I mean, with, with Braun, he was such – Man, the jetpack got put on that guy so early, man. It was in, it was incredible to see. They knew they had something special with him. He debuts with the Wyatts. And then when he became his own character, he was just tearing through stuff. I mean, the the television antics that they were pulling for this guy. Yeah. Him flipping over buses. He did it again recently. Yep. Uh, the Roman Reigns issues. Oh, I'm not finished with you. Like, that, that was, was crazy. Crazy. And then he has his catchphrase. You're going to get these hands. He finally was the title from... Goldberg. Goldberg. Wow. I, I uh, forgot all about that, didn't you? And that recently just happened. 
listen, he fought Brock, took a suplex, rolled over and stood right up. That's at that moment where I was like, boom, him. Please let it happen. It didn't happen. No. A year and some change went by. And then he gets it off Goldberg. Listen, I don't know who they can put against him to really give him a challenge, to really make it entertaining. This this Miz and Morrison duo team up handicap. I, listen, we kind of saw that already with uh, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho when they technically were like their buddies. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought it was cool. It was a cool dynamic. They're both entertaining enough. I just don't find the Miz and Morrison as comedically entertaining. Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to do with Braun, man. They got to find somebody to come get it. Somebody to take him on. Somebody to make it more entertaining. Somebody to be a threat. Yeah, yeah, but um, and we again, that's something that we can uh, that kind of goes with what we will be talking about later into today. So, but moving forward, we had the WWE Championship going on. Drew McIntyre, the current WWE Champion, versus the Almighty Bobby Lashley. Uh. McIntyre remains the champ. Good. Um, due to some interference with Lana. Uh, mm-hmm. Lana ruins Bobby Lashley's chances at finally reigning supreme as a WWE champion. And due to Lana's antics, we still have Drew McIntyre. Now, um, I got to say, I don't mind the outcome of this match, as opposed to the Oscar double count out earlier within the pay-per-view. I don't mind this one because it both saves face for them. If we're going to be honest, I did not have any expectations that the belt was going to come off of McIntyre just because of how it's been built. And the fact that he still has not had a rematch yet with Brock Lesnar. So no way that they're going to make that switch yet. But I love that they didn't tank Bobby. I'm okay. very glad that they didn't tank him with that. I'm glad that they kind of added to that storyline to go, okay, now we get to see kind of the shift in the move out. Because um, if memory serves me correct, I think Rusev is no longer with WWE. So that I think that, of, he's no longer under the contract with the yeah. world. So I think that may be what uh, may be in line for mm-hmm. Lana as well on her way out. Uh, this may be her exit as well, uh, her ending storyline and stuff. Uh, which I think it, it is pretty cool to have that kind of exit, if that be the case. Not saying that it is, but um, we'll we'll see. But I'm glad that they allowed him to stay face. I'm loving Bobby's new attitude. Uh, loving the connection with MVP, like we've already discussed before. So uh, yeah. that, the match was good, I, and I feel like Bobby's getting a lot crisp, a, a lot more crisp, a lot more clean, sharper in the ring, and so he looks a lot more focused and determined. Like that, like he's about to get this push. So I'm looking forward to see what they continue to do with Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley going up against Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is that guy. He is the face of the company at this point. They have several faces of the company, let's be honest. But there's one man who holds that title who's supposed to be the face of the company, and that being Drew McIntyre. I didn't think it was going to come to Bobby Lashley. I didn't want it to come to Bobby Lashley. We've had this talk. I do not fear Bobby Lashley in that ring as a WWE competitor. I fear him in a UFC ring or MMA ring. Anything else, it just does not connect for me. So I'm glad he didn't come off McIntyre, and let's see who they run him up against next. Do you think we could be building for a undisputed championship pinnacle to everything soon? Nah. No? Nah. The only the only reason why I would say that is because at the at right now there's still way too many people on the rosters Got and it. talent they continue in to try to get and uh bump up. So okay. you need to have three separate divisions. And due to the fact that you know SmackDown is on Fox, USA is on uh or uh, has Raw, they I I don't see them want to share that championship on both programs. Got it. So okay. Yeah, so that's the only reason why I would say not not in the near future. If it was still like before these these pay these uh these splits of these different channels, I'd probably be like, yeah, you know what, I can I can see that happening, but I don't I don't think it would be wise for them to do right now. Um, but also moving forward in the backlash pay per view, we had the street. We're supposed to have the street profits uh, versus the Viking Raiders for the Raw Tag Team Titles. 
Yeah. Um, the match did not happen. It became this um, onslaught of antics behind the scenes and stuff like that. Um, first off, if I could just be honest, wasn't digging that their break, their title defense was announced via social media like two or three hours before the pay per view started. Like, mm-hmm. This could have been made. This match could have been made. I didn't mind the video. I don't mind the whole them with the Viking Raiders competing in different little sports and stuff like that. I don't mind it. I actually enjoy it. And it actually um, opens up the Viking Raiders to being a little bit more likable, So, which gives them a lot more camera time for us to see their display. So this is like, true. Yeah. So it's like, yo, I, I'm glad that the street profits are even helping give them personality. Gotcha. Um, so... I I get it to continue it. It is, you know, if you know what it is, you can't be mad at it. But if you know what it is, it's like, what the hell are y'all doing? Yeah. Listen, man, they uh the street profits are living in a social media era. They know, those two guys know how to get the community behind them. They started with red solo cups. You saw what it was like when they were coming out of NXT. It was a party. Yeah, everyone's having a good time. They're jumping in the crowd, the crown on my man Montez's head, the red cups, red solo cup crew over here. They turned up, they lit, boom. They make it over to Raw, they win the titles. Now the, the red solo cups match the red titles. It's legit. They have for sure figured out a way to be more engaging with the audience outside of just being on television. They have. So these little things are doing like this, these antics, I think that hopefully it doesn't become all they do, but I understand why it's being done because even them pulling some of those clips from these these antics, they make for great social media content, does it not? Yeah. That's where I stand with it. Yeah. There's something to be done here. There's for sure something to be done. You look at what me and you do on Twitch, right? Yep. It is smart of you to figure out how to create content that's going to go on somewhere else to live on another platform while you are live in those moments. Very We're going to give them the profits. Hopefully, they, this is a part of their plan. And like you said, with uh, Viking, Raiding, Viking Raiders, it gives them a whole different look. I believe they threw up a, a lower third. They call themselves the Viking Profits? Uh, the Street Vikings, I think. I don't know. It was something. It was great, though. Like, like you said, if and going back to what I said earlier, if you know what it is, you know what it is. Yeah. And if you don't know what it is, you just kind of like, yo, what the, what hell? the hell is going on here? <laughs> right. But I get like you said, I couldn't agree more. So yeah. um, moving into the main event, the match of the night, what they yeah. were pushing for this entire backlash to yeah. be for this past Sunday's pay-per-view, the greatest wrestling match ever. Right. Randy Orton versus Edge. And of course, if you had any doubt of who was going to take it. Of course, the Viper Slay. The Viper picks up the win against Edge. Now, of course, as any WWE fan, as any wrestling fan, Talk about as it. any person of love for this industry, first thought was like, you have to be out your fucking mind to call oh. this the greatest wrestling match of all time. First of all, like, like before, because I, I know we're going to have a lot to say about this. Um, and just correct me if I'm wrong, but I just kind of feel like I'm speaking for everyone right now. Mm-hmm. When we think about these greatest wrestling matches, we think about, like, as you brought up in the last episode, uh, Shawn versus Undertaker at WrestleMania, yep. both times, uh, yep. one where, where Shawn Michaels' career was on the line. Yep. Uh, we think of Shawn Michaels with Ric Flair, his retirement match. We think of uh, Macho Man versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. We think of The Rock versus John Cena. We actually even think of Stone Cold versus, versus The Rock. So many matches come to mind. That's just in the WWE alone. You know what I'm saying? And so when you think of those things, 
not not to knock these people, but you don't first think Edge and Randy Orton. Hell no. Nope. Not incredible either. performers though. Incredible wrestlers. Exactly. Legends in the right, but not that. Exactly, and that's what it was, and I think that's what pissed a lot of people off. So they had a lot that they had to go off. They had a big mountain for them to climb, and I gotta say though. How am I going to put I want to put this properly. They got to the top of the mountain. Did they stake the flag in it, though? No. I will say that. So that's why it's left debatable. But they did climb all of those hurdles that you would have thought they would have fallen into this race. I don't know what the hell these two people doped up on before they walked out here. But best believe we had Randy Orton like mid evolution era out in that ring in this pay per view. We had Ed, we had Edge at WrestleMania 17 spearing Jeff Hardy off the ladder, mixed in with a little bit of Marvel's Logan's fighting tactics in that ring. These yeah. two, I don't again, I don't know. I know they just had been saving up for it, which could be the reason why we didn't really see them doing matches, just just promos for the majority of the time. But man, this was a nostalgia match with some of using some of the, them using some of the best uh wrestling moves from people from past generations like Rock Bottoms, the pedigrees, um, even just to beating the hell out of each other. You saw every different type of wrestling style displayed in this match. Brute gotcha. force, submissions, technical wrestling, the counters. Yeah. Oh my God. Like so they, it was it could be compared to some of the things that uh about what people love seeing from the Japan side. Gotcha. These two these people that go at it until they are absolutely exhausted. And it's just what is that move that's gonna end this person? That's what we saw with this. And of course Randy Orton ended it with a punt heard around the world but man i will say this match is definitely a debatable for greatest wrestling match of all time okay uh look they brought every element to the match they brought every element that you would need to bring to a match that you have marketed as the greatest wrestling match there were certain spots that people recognized. This was a story, flat out. That's all this was. They were telling a story. If you were ever going to try to uh, um, explain to someone what wrestling entertainment is, it's that. Yeah. You, you as a fan who already know you're watching and you are literally being told a story from start to finish. There's elements that seem like deja vu. There's something brand new. It's a, ah, it's a spectacle. It's all of those things wrapped up in one. Greatest wrestling match ever. I mean, everything you just described, though, is what makes a great wrestling match. Bingo. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, did they accomplish the job? They did, they did accomplish that. But you know what will, will always make it debatable and what also taught me of why this is so important? Because the re there's, two, there's two things. One... This wasn't the pinnacle of it. If this was the final one between the two of them, that is what would have topped it off. That would have been like, I'm about to drive the flag into the top of the mountain. But of course, this right. is just the second chapter. So now it's kind of like, okay, how are you gonna top this? Now what's gonna happen? You did a last man standing match. And now you're doing the, I believe it was a last man standing match. Um, and now you're doing, you did the greatest wrestling match ever. So it's like, what's next? In yeah. this chapter, because now y'all both tied. He beat you, uh, Edge beat you at WrestleMania. Uh, Randy Orton just beat him here at Backlash. So now, like, what's that third chapter? And then the third thing is the audience being absent. That, that is a huge lifeline that is taking out of this because a lot of the things they were doing, that aura and that sound of that audience is what really drives it home. And that element missing there really took that away. So that's why I said top of the mountain, but not. Ugh. Yeah. They pumped the sound effects in. They did what they had to do to make it feel like it. 
Was yeah. it? I, I gotta be. I'm like, mm, it seems like they might have done it. They might have figured it out. It's, so it's, it's debatable. How this all you know plays out? It's it's technically one one, right? Yeah, it's one one. So it's only right in the WWE world. You gotta go one more match, and I think we all know what's gonna happen. I can predict what's gonna happen. We all know what's happening. They're going to put Edge out of his misery. They're going to put him out to pasture. He's not staying around long, guys. He get we win it. He went out. He came back, but he wants to go out on his terms. And if I could say anything from having the ability to control your own career, where it goes, how it operates, the ups and the downs of it, embracing it, Edge is doing what he wants to do to tell one hell of a story. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens, man. Are we building up to a mania match? Summer Sl- Summer Slam. Either Summer Slam or Extreme Rules. We, uh, there it is. Cause I, but I think it will be Summer Slam. I just don't know. I think it's gonna be an I Quit match. Oh shit! I think Summer Slam. We're gonna see an I Quit match with Edge and Randy Orton, and I think Randy Orton is gonna quit. I think Randy Orton is gonna quit. Will. It's not happening. Nah. Randy Orton. No, 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 no. But before you go there, remember, I quit match doesn't mean you quit the company. No, it just means you quit that yeah, match. You, just, you quit but, the match. But Edge is going out in that match. There's his retirement match. You got to think about it. The grit story. That's why I say that. That is the ultimate showing of grit. Gotcha. Because think about it. Even how they've been building this. I had to work for this. You were handed this. You don't appreciate this. And now I'm going to expose you for that. Because okay. anybody that worked this hard for that has that fighting chance that had to sit out for nine years like I did would okay. never go, I quit. You, however, will always do that because you have that chance. I just feel like that will be the perfect way for him to show Randy for who he truly is. And then that way Edge can go off the way he wants. And then even Randy can build off of that moving forward. Gotcha. So that's just that's just my opinion. I'm just like but great theory. Great theory yeah. to see. I would like to see how this plays out, brother. I would. I would too. I would too. So uh but yeah, but that was backlash. Uh like I said, great back backlash isn't one of those like, oh my god, I can't wait until backlash. It's gonna be epic. No, it's just like we know what backlash is. Yep. And that's what it was. So we, I, I was glad to uh, be able to catch that. Glad to see where some of the stories are going, and uh, not glad about a few of them. So that's what we're about to get into. We were originally going to um, discuss the greatest matches of all time, um, kind of based off of the fact that we didn't think this was going to deliver. But the fact that it did deliver. I believe now the, the the greatest matches should be a whole episode within itself. I agree. Because of being able to talk about that. So I don't want to stifle that uh, epicness by putting it in such a short thing. So the topic we will talk about today is something that I, I, I want to discuss, but I do want to tread lightly about it. Um, what the fuck is going on with the women's division right now? Um, <laughs> like... Uh- you know, not not to again, not to say this with any kind of disrespect, but right now SmackDown's women division is looking like a real joke. Like you have an abundant amount of talent that you're doing nothing with. You have Lacey Evans, you have Tamina, you have Naomi, you have Carmella, you have Sasha Banks, you have Alexa Bliss, you have uh, Nikki Cross, you have uh, Bailey. Who else am I? I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Over there. Uh, Mandy Rose, Sonya Banks. Like you have this amazing line of talent who is still working during yeah. the pandemic, who is still working. And Mandy's on the sideline in mixed tag matches with Sonya and Dolph. Sonya's kind of getting her push, which I don't mind. I kind of like the push that Sonya's going. I do like her in-ring presence. I think she, I think she's dope. Um, Lacey Evans is sprinkled. I, I just like, I, it, it's, it's like not even just the women's division, just SmackDown in general. Like, I, I want to get to that a little bit later, but I wanted to just kind of start off with that. But like, cause like NXT on fire. 
Yep. Women's division is is on fire right now. Um, you know, of course, got a few things that can be shaped up, but again, they fall under the still under kind of that developmental thing. So that's okay for us to see. But with Raw going on, SmackDown going on, it just feels like it's a scramble right now. Got you. Like what? Like I'm just saying, I'm so confused as to just like what is the future of the women's division because you got the tag team uh champions bailey and sasha bailey and sasha are going to be on nxt this upcoming wednesday facing tegan knox and something blackheart i always feel i'm so sorry i always forget her name i know it's the green girl in the tank and i got to remember her name i do rock dust for that huh roxy yeah, blackheart yeah yeah I, and i do huh your shotzi I think it's Shasi Blackheart, isn't it? I, again, again, I do apologize. I am not trying to like not forget Blackheart. Shasi Blackheart. S H O T Z I. Shotzi. Shotzi Blackheart. That's it. I knew it was Blackheart. I just couldn't remember what the first name is. But yeah, Shotzi Blackheart. Tegan Knox will be uh, facing Bailey and Sasha for the uh, SmackDown. I mean, I don't know why I keep trying to throw a brand on there. The the I was about to do it again. The um, Women's Tag Team Titles. But again, though, and, and, and again, am I, am I off base here? Am I like, am I tripping or or am I just overanalyzing? I don't want to say you're tripping. So I'm going to say maybe you're just overanalyzing. I want to say that, well, the landscape is just different right now, bro. The landscape is different. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. They don't know. We don't know when an arena is going to open up again, Will. They have no clue. So how are they gonna? What what do they need to really keep people's attention? They they're doing what they think is best. So are they really focusing on building these storylines and these incredible moments between the women competitors? No, I don't feel that they are. But they were riding such an incredible heat streak over the last couple of years. So maybe that's- I, I think that it's just the heat streak that we've been so used to with all of these incredible you know athletes in that ring, man. These women have been putting on on sure. for the last couple of years. I just think that where we are right now, collectively as a world, they don't have the space right now. They got to keep selling what's going to keep these lights on right now. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's everything else. That's a that I, you know what? That's a you do bring up a a, a, a fair point with that, and I think you did just kind of hit the hammer on the nail with that one. Yeah, um, you you do have a point. This is a, a very weird time that we're in right now. Um, and like you said, we just don't know exactly what's going to be going on and stuff. But, you know, I just even still with that, even still with that, you want to be entertained. You want them to have something. I can't. It. And again, and I'm just going to be that guy. I can't let it slide because you it. you chose to stay on. Yep. You chose to remain on. So for that point. But where I can give a lack to this and where I think you have a very valid point is the fact of we've had that heat so much and now it is time for the cool down it's it's always just like how and that's why i was like when you said it it just it explained it so perfectly it's just like when i thought about the becky lynch thing i was like yo what's gonna happen with becky once this heat the man campaign is over yeah and she got to take a break for a while and somebody else got to carry the reins like how do you come off of that yeah so much to the point is she went and had a baby <laughs> and and left, yep. which I think was dope. Dope ass exit. Whoop everybody's ass. I'm the best. I've proved that I'm out. And yep. I'm going to give the only person that could ever beat me the title. Facts. Here you go. You deserve it. Yep. Um, dope. But I don't, like you just said, with them, it's starting to slow down again. And I, and I guess to me, I'm just, I get nervous for it because I know the women division is still new. It's still, it made this run. It's still making it staple within here. And I just don't want it to disappear because of this happening and then it lacks or it turns into something that isn't what it was intended to be. I just still want it to continue to be great. So I guess it's, so it's just more me of concern storyline wise too. And this is nothing towards any of the uh, WWE women superstars because all of those talents are phenomenal. So it's just this is basically this is oh, this is directly towards just 
story wise as far as what's going on behind the scenes like with the smackdown writing and the raw writing uh as far as it comes to this women's division it's a different time brother and uh i agree with you because i'm a big fan of a lot of the the athletes on that side man yeah. these women are putting in a lot of work on in that ring I've been a sasha banks fan been a been a fan of the original horse women and then we were curious i'm like is there any girls gonna be able to keep up with them is there anyone that's gonna be able to like take that next step with them because they've opened up the door the alexa blisses came the uh the what's her tag team partner's name um uh, nikki cross nikki cross the shanna baszler's the eo shirai's the uh dakota kai's down there in nxt uh naomi who's been around for the longest time uh you know, uh, uh, what's what's my girl's name from the Bret Hart family? Oh, uh, Natalia. Natalia, like, they're there. They're there. Um, we just gonna have to wait and see, brother, but I am with you that something, it does seem off because it's not as engaging as it's supposed to be. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Engaging. You're not wrong, you didn't say you were tripping. All right, all right. But I was like, all right, because I was like, I know it's not just me. I just, I, I just feel like it, it's a little bit, Laxed, like like even for instance, right now, I would love just how they did with Randy Orton and um, Edge. Do the same thing for Natalia and Beth Phoenix. Got it. Like give give us some like like at least give us some fantasy matches that we want to see. It's just like yo, if we can't if we can't give a developing story, let's develop a quick one just based off of the matches that we're gonna make. Like I would love to see Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. Yeah, I want to see Bianca Belair wrestle. I want to see Sasha Banks wrestle. I don't want to see Bianca put Sasha through a table with that strength. No, I just want to see a match. I want to see a match between them. That's it. But it's like you, those are the things you have potential to do. Like, right, like, and and that's the only thing that I'm saying when it comes to that. It's just like, it feels like right now it's a, it's really, really laxed. And like you said, these are trying times. So, you know, I guess for me, I just need to find an understanding for that and just kind of go, all right, all right. Just a little, brother. I get you. You're not tripping. You said you're overanalyzing. You're just missing a little piece of the formula. Hey, man, I just don't want to mess messing my, my lady wrestlers over, man. I'm hey, killing it. We love it. We love to see it. Remember, we came from an era of the Litas and Trishas, yeah. and then there was a time where it was just so bland. There was nothing. They were on they were on screen for a total of like five minutes. That's it. Yep. And they said, give Divas a chance. Give Divas a chance. And they changed the word Diva to superstar just like everyone else yeah and these women have done an incredible job we have we, we had the evolution not the evolution but yeah it was a evolution, yeah, it was evolution. Right? Yeah. or revol- one of the two evolution um, evolution with an entire women's wrestling pay-per-view it was dope to see it was history made uh what what an incredible night i watched that really really inspired that night no lie they inspired oh, yeah. all, all the little girls out there and all the women out there as a man in this world i felt inspired by seeing that 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 happen Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, um, I get you're coming from, though. You just want it. You just want to be. You want it. You want it to be there. Why isn't it the way it was all these years? I, yeah, man. I just, I, I just feel like it would be even the, the, the more. It would be a perfect time for them to even shine more now. Like, gotcha. I, like a lot. I wouldn't mind seeing them as main events on Raw and SmackDown right now. Like, just like you know, but like I said, just even the idea of them being able to come together to do things. Gotcha. So. so but we'll see. We'll see what's gonna happen. We'll see what's gonna be up. But uh, we do know that uh, that the that Monday Night Raw, uh, SmackDown, NXT, of course, is this week. The next pay per view is gonna be Extreme Rules. I believe that is July nineteenth. Uh, okay. Excuse me if the date is off. Uh, not sure what's gonna be set up for that. Of course, like you said, Smack uh, SummerSlam should be right after that. Uh, rumors are stating that Brock Lesnar is supposed to be having a match at SummerSlam, so might be getting that rematch against Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. We don't know. We're gonna find out um, soon, I guess. Heyman's not even at Raw. No. Heyman's not even creative at Raw anymore. Nope. 
So oh. I don't know what's going on, but we gonna find out, and we gonna always keep everybody informed, up to date here. Uh, for the WWE as well as talking about some of the best, the most unpopular opinions when it comes to wrestling and just our ideas of what's going on in this industry that we absolutely love and have grown love it. On. So thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Kayfabe. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Make sure you follow myself. You follow Cleo Thomas. You follow his Twitch page, which is just fucking off of the chain. Follow my <laughs> Twitch page as well. It which is, is fucking off the chain. chain. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Make sure you check out our K Tokens All Dev Gaming, and we'll continue coming out with the content. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to go outside soon uh, so I can smell what The Rock is cooking. And that is the bottom line because the boys at K Fabe said so. I have been the anomaly, Will Farrow. Leo Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. And we will catch you next time.